With a capacity retention of 82% after 10,000 cycles, the first stable solid-state battery has come as an unconventional electrolyte mix, composed of lithium germanium phosphorus sulfide and lithium phosphorus sulfide chloride. The first one is usually unstable and fails rather quickly. The second is a highly conductive solid-state electrolyte material, though way more stable, still presents the same problems as the first one. Regardless of which one you use, dendrites still appear in a short number of cycles. However, if you mix the two, the most stable solid-state battery so far is realized. Dendrite penetration is a big challenge to current battery technology. They form after many battery cycles. Basically, while a battery is charging, lithium rearranges itself in an uneven manner, forming extensions called dendrites, reaching out towards the cathode of the battery. This happens because liquid electrolyte enables such flexibility. Dendrites represent a problem because they either lead the battery to short circuit or, if you suppress them, current is reduced. The goal of a solid-state electrolyte is to stop dendrite from forming while allowing ions to move through. However, once a crack appears in the ceramic pellet, dendrite penetration is unavoidable. A combination of these electrolytes seems unusual, since the first decomposes itself in contact with lithium rather shortly. Yet, that is the key discovery here. Using them in a sandwiched manner that look like this, constitutes what they call a symmetric battery, a simple solution to a complex problem. By mixing a stable electrolyte with an unstable one, the unstable electrolyte works as a countermeasure for dendrite formation while it's still allowing ions to flow through. Since LGPS reacts with lithium, though dendrites still form, none of them can reach the cathode because any crack that is created during a cycle is quickly filled by the reaction of lithium LGPS. Think of it as a self-healing system where short-circuiting the battery is a thing of the past. This approach is a clear step away from the conventional thinking of blocking dendrite penetration, which has an immense impact towards current. What this means in practice is that solid-state batteries usually require a thick, brittle, electrolyte layer giving up flexibility as a result. Now, not only these layers can be flexible, since both are nothing more than micro-sized pellets, but they also make it easier for these batteries to be produced. Then there is the fact that graphite is used to isolate the electrolyte from the electrodes, a major step forward in terms of moving away from rare minerals like indium. Not only it's a rare one, but its use impacts the overall final price of the batteries. But before I continue, I need to explain how tests were conducted. Usually, to test any battery out, they are put through intense charge and discharge cycles until the battery either dies or blows up. This is called the C-rate. It is basically a calculation that tells you how much energy a battery can provide for a certain amount of time. 1C essentially means that a fully charged battery with a capacity of 1 amp hour is able to provide 1 amp for 1 hour. 0.5C and it provides 0.5 amps for 2 hours. Fundamentally, it comes down to two calculations. Multiplying the battery capacity by the C rate gives you how much current you will be able to discharge the battery with. Multiplying the C rate by 60 minutes and you get how long you will have that current for. Okay, so how good are the preliminary tests of this new technology? To say the least, very promising. Using this multi-layer system, after 5,000 cycles, this battery still had 90% capacity retention, reaching 82% capacity retention after 10,000 cycles in a 20C rate, without any detriment to the overall battery. The reason they test in high C rates is because dendrites are known to form more easily. Conventional batteries like 18650 ones, at the same rate of 20C, have fewer number of cycles, or less than 500, and a retention rate way below 70%. This new battery schematic can easily get to 10,000 cycles. Not only it greatly increases battery stability, but it also enables lithium concentration to be increased. 
In real life terms, that means that batteries using this approach would have more lithium available in them, which could dramatically increase specific energy from 250 watt hour per kilogram to 500 or even 1000. And the best part of all of this is that this multi-layer system is not limited to any specific material. Fundamentally, what this study has shown is that the approach of using two different electrolytes, an unstable one sandwiched in between a stable one, is the key for improvement of current technology. What really matters is the sandwich design principle. Any other solid electrolyte can be used, such as polymers, gels or sulfides, halides, oxides, phosphates or nitrates, with one simple caveat. If they are in the right place of the multi-layer approach, according to their stabilities and instabilities, battery performance should improve dramatically. Alright folks, that's it, we're done here.